Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and we're going to talk about my favorite subject, which is corrupt journalism in comics. It has so many victims, and I think we just identified another way that corrupt journalism really seriously harms the comic book industry. So in the last 24 hours, I saw one video and one poll on two popular comic book channels on YouTube. One was Perch and one was Casually Comics, and... What I basically got out of this is that people who are open to reading comics have specific interests, like they prefer one company over another, or they are retailers, are not getting basic information. So Mark Millar has Nightclub out, which it, I, it took me forever to, to get that title. It's like, oh, Nightclub, Nightclub. He has a nightclub out, and it's uh, $1.99, I believe. I don't know what the retailers are paying for it, but I'm assuming if the book is half price, it's also half as much for the retailers. So Perch was like, um, uh, and Perch and Norm MacDonald are kind of melding together in my head. <laughs> so now when I remember uh, Perch saying something, I hear it in Norm MacDonald's uh, uh, voice. So he's like, uh, hey, so you are probably... Uh, Really happy about that half price. I probably brought in a lot of customers and you paid half as much. And the guy was like, yeah, I, I didn't know that. I didn't order more of it because I didn't know. Um, and you might say, oh, it's there in the catalog. It's in the pricing. But, you know, they're buying hundreds of comics per month and they might just not notice. And then Sasha. Yes, I finally had to have a talk with myself and accept that her name is Sasha, not Crystal. Even though I think she looks like a crystal. She did a poll on her channel, Casually Comics, talking about not Dark Crisis. I did a video yesterday where I kept referring to Lazarus Planet as Dark Crisis. I'm not really a DC guy, but apparently Dark Crisis was the event that just ended and Lazarus Planet is the one that just started. And supposedly they're quite different. <laughs> um, uh, but she did a poll and she just said, are you reading... Notice she didn't say, are you buying? Are you reading Lazarus Planet? Uh, to which two-thirds of the 6,000 people who responded said they weren't even aware that it existed. Now, you could point lots of fingers, but I was talking to a friend, and he was also unaware of it. And he made the point that he gets his news from YouTube. He goes to a handful of channels, and that's how he checks the news. Just as 10, 20 years ago, you would wake up, you would log into CompuServe or whatever, and you would go to Bleeding Cool. And even though even 15 plus years ago, we knew Rich Johnston was a bit of a troublemaker, that's where we got our news. We got our news from Bleeding Cool. We got our news from CBR. We got our news from Newsarama. Nobody ever got their news from Comics Beat. I feel like that website is just a hobby of Heidi McDonald's. But anyway, um, slowly at first, and then all at once, we all lost faith in mainstream comic book websites because they were not just corrupt, they were exceedingly corrupt. Although I always kind of hesitate to call Bleeding Cool a news website. I see Rich Johnson the same as the Joker from The Dark Knight. He just wants to watch the world burn. It's funny when careers are destroyed. It's funny when freelancers are not paid. It's funny when companies go out of business. He just loves it. But we had CBR who a few years ago decided that you were not allowed to talk about CG or CG adjacent, or they would just kind of direct conversations. It wasn't even something offensive in the post. There were entire subjects that were off limits. Meanwhile, a few of their writers are completely obsessed with Eric July, but you can't talk about him on their forums. Not even getting into just a general level of corruption and shilling for only the mainstream that you find in most of their articles. I think Heidi McDonald's corruption is an objective fact that I no longer need to prove, but she won't even discuss Indiegogo. She will barely admit that it exists because she doesn't like people who use it. Yes, this is a 60-year-old woman who acts like she's in middle school. Newsarama is no longer its own website. It's just a web page on a larger site but when Chris Arant was still in charge of it, and he was in charge for like 10 years, he very proudly and publicly started something that was kind of like Journalist. Journalist was a thing from, I guess, 10 plus years ago where journalists would say, hey, let's go to this 
discussion board and we're going to have emails and we're just going to talk because we're journalists. But it was a way to collude and connive and hone the message. So a few years ago, he's like, uh, hey, if you're a journalist, contact me. We have this secret group where we collude and connive. We decide who gets coverage, how they get coverage. Now, he didn't say that outright. But there is zero non-corrupt reason for a bunch of journalists from competing websites to have a group where they coordinate. It's not like real life journalists where they go to danger zones and they might want to ask a question. Hey, I'm embedding with the British Royal Marines. Do they provide kit or do I have to provide my own kit? Or you're going to whatever dangerous city and you're saying, what is the safest hotel for journalists to stay at? Those are legitimate reasons for journalists to have a group where they discuss things. There's no reason for a bunch of people who just sit at home on their computer to have a group to collude. It's completely corrupt on the face of it. So what happens now is we have an entire industry where there is no trusted mainstream coverage. This is a huge problem because things that should get out there to retailers, hey, an A-list writer has a new book, the preview art looks great, and it's half as much, and you can send that out to your customers on your email newsletters, which hopefully don't get caught up in spam filters. Or you can tell people, hey, next month this is coming out, next week this is coming out. They don't know. Sasha, not Crystal, has a very popular YouTube channel, and she talks about DC all the time. And her fans didn't know about Lazarus Planet because she hasn't mentioned it yet. Wes has mentioned it, and I think all of the awareness of Lazarus Planet is coming from Wes mentioning it on Thinking Critical. The corruption of the mainstream comic book press has been encouraged by the mainstream industry because they loved it. For more than a decade, it's like, oh, hey, if I send this email to Rich Johnson, he'll do an article and he'll destroy one of my competitors, one of my enemies, someone I don't like, someone who voted differently than me. But what they did is they just poisoned this well continuously every day for more than a decade. And now nobody trusts these sites. Nobody goes to these sites. Most of these sites have devolved into listicles where it's just like, top 10 things you didn't know about Spider-Man's web shooters. Or they're talking about TV, or they're talking about Funko Pop. These comic sites have to talk about all these non-comic related topics because it's the only way they can get any kind of traffic. You know, you talk about blind items where you mention someone, but you don't say their name. It's a blind industry. If you're a retailer or if you're a customer, you are in a dark room just kind of feeling about, oh, I wonder if there's any new products. I wonder if there's any new sales incentives on pricing strategy. I don't know. Everything's in the dark. And the only way that anyone is getting any information about comics is from YouTube which is not only not supported by the mainstream publishers, but is often actively attacked. So anyway, how do you get your news about the comic book industry? Is it almost entirely from YouTube channels, or do you have other venues? As I always say, the most trustworthy news site is ICV2, based purely on how boring it is. <laughs> but besides that, I also rely on other YouTube channels. I would say that Casually Comics is okay for current stuff. She just reads a couple of books and it doesn't even sound like consistently, but I think she likes the Bat books and she keeps track of the DC universe. Wes from Thinking Critical is probably the best place to go if you just want to know what books are coming out and how good they are. Perch is good for talking about books, but also talking about the industry and giving some insight and context in that regard. And me, I'm just switching to an all Velma channel. Just all Velma all the time. I'm going to talk about Velma and uh, Amber Heard. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.